My name is Alex and welcome to Package Main, a channel where we talk about anything related to backend development. In today's episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about GitHub API and specifically how to use it in Go. In the past few days, in my free time, I built this fun project to uh, print out your favorite GitHub repositories as PDF. Um, so yeah, you can put your repository name, maybe a tag, and yeah, generate a PDF and maybe print it out. Fun, right? And yeah, imagine I worked with GitHub API here a lot to download the repository archive, to get the latest tag of the repository, um, yeah, to get the readme contents and different other API endpoints. GitHub API is really great. It allows you to do pretty much everything with your GitHub repositories, to extend GitHub functionality, to authenticate users, to automate some recurrent tasks. And yeah, after using GitHub for 13 years, I can say that it's probably the best API out there. There are different types of authentication in GitHub API. You can create a personal access token and uh, use API to act on your behalf. Or you can create on an OAuth app and then authenticate users using that, uh, call the API on users' behalf. You can also create a GitHub app, which is a more sophisticated type of application that can also act independently. You can also call GitHub API without any authentication to access some common information about public repositories this API has lower uh, limits, so be careful when using that. Otherwise, if you need bigger limits, uh, consider creating a GitHub app or OAuth app. Since OAuth authentication is the most common way to use GitHub API, let's focus on it in this video. We'll create an application that let users sign in and then we'll call some API endpoints. If you go to Settings and Developer Settings, you can find these three tabs that let you create different uh, apps or create a personal access token. So what we need for today's video is to create one OAuth application. So click New. Let's give it a name. And some fake URL. We don't need description. In GitHub app, there is only one callback URL that can be specified, which is quite cool because you don't need to set it from the application, but it also means that on each environment or for each environment, you'll have to create a separate OAuth application. Let's assume that, no, let's assume that for our local application, the callback URL would be localhost 8080 slash callback. So why do we need this callback URL? That's because how the OAuth 2 applications work. On our application locally, we'll send user to a specific redirect URL on GitHub environment to sign in. So they need to read the scopes, authorize. Then GitHub will send user to this specific URL with the code. It's a kind of token and a state. I'll, I'll show examples later. And then uh, our application can exchange this code and state for access token that we can then store in a database locally or don't store it at all and request every time a new one. And let's click register application. What we get here is a client ID that we need to store and also we need to generate the secret. Uh, the secret, you can see it only once. So make sure after you generate it, you save it. Um, Hopefully not in the repository, uh, somewhere in your I don't know, environment variables or as a secret map. So now I have my secret. Uh, don't bother using them. I'll remove them after I publish this video or I mean before it. As I mentioned previously, We'll need first to redirect users to GitHub for authentication and then also implement the callback. So I'll start by creating these two endpoints in my application. So we can use HTTP, what is new surf max, 
and then add two endpoints. So we can use handle func. So one would be redirect and we need to create a function for that and a callback. And then we can start our server. This is HTTP, this is serve. So it was port 8080, we pass our max here. And let's check out error, right? So something like fatal F. So now it's time to implement our functions redirect and callback. So they take the, remember, response writer, response writer and HTTP request. Same for our callback. As I mentioned in our redirect function, we need to redirect user to a specific URL. But where do we get this URL? Since it's a standard OAuth 2 implementation, Go has a package for that at golang.org slash x slash OAuth 2. And there is a sub package for GitHub specifically. Now let's see how to get this URL. And this OS2 package has a struct called config that we need to use for configuration. So we can create a function get OAuth config, for example, that will return pointer to OAuth2.config, right? And there are a few things that we can co configure here. So the required ones are client ID, client secret, then the list of scopes, and endpoint. And for the endpoint, there is a define github dot endpoint value already. In the scopes field, you can put the list of scopes that you want our application to access. On this page, you can read the available list. So for this example, I'll do repo, public repo, for example, and then I think there was user, let's say user dot or colon email. So user call email and then repo, public repo. I believe that's like that. For this demonstration, I'll just use hard-coded client ID and client secret, but you obviously shouldn't do that. So put a comment, use nvars instead. This config struct has a method to actually get our URL, our redirection URL that we need. So we can create another function, get redirect URL mm, that returns just simply a string, right? So we'll do something like config that and return config.out code URL. There is one important argument to this function, which is called state. It's optional, um, but how it works. Uh, when we send the state here, it will also be sent back to you together with the code in the callback. And you can use it to, let's say, map it to a specific user, for example, or do some other actions. For this demo, I don't need state, so I can just use some some string or make it even empty and then just simply don't check it in the in the callback. Um, all right, so we can get the URL. Now what we need to do is simply redirect user to this URL.
so yeah something like HTTP I believe it's redirect um, write a reader get redirect URL and what you should use status temporary redirect now let's go to and implement our callback function so as I mentioned in the callback we'll get the code as a as a query so we can get it r.url. is it like that or hmm. I think it's query get query get code similarly we can get our state that we don't need for this example so I have to do validate state right now in our configuration just get well config we have a function called config dot exchange so if our code is valid and everything works well this function will give us the access token we need so uh, we need to set contact, send context there. So um, let's create context. Let's see with timeout. Time, let's say five seconds. Don't forget to cancel that. So send the context and the code and uh, it returns token or error so token error and if error is not nil we can let's say we can lock our error but also right header for example status let's do bad request here otherwise we have our token now if we look at the token structure so there is access token that we can use to call the API eventually there is also importantly a refresh token and expiry time and what's cool about this refresh token is that you know access token may expire and so you'll always need to request it again. However, if you save this whole structure, um, kind of you need refresh token, token type, expiry in database, for example, or somewhere on, on a disk and use this whole token structure, the OAuth 2 package in Go will always refresh your tokens and, and give the kind of fresh access token you need. Uh, since our application currently doesn't have any database, I won't go there. So yeah, we have our access token here. That's what we're going to use. And yeah, let's continue. There are multiple packages that let you work with GitHub API and Go. The most popular one is this one, Go-GitHub. And it's really great because it covers pretty much every single endpoint GitHub API has. It has a nice but quite long reference. Um, yeah, so let's import this package and for example, get some repositories from the user. And we can start by importing this package to our code. A note that GitHub would collide in our case, so let's rename this one to go, go GitHub, for example. So go GitHub. And the first thing we need to do is actually let's create a separate function for that. So get current user repos and it will need our user access token so I'll define the arguments a bit later but the client would be our go github dot new client we can do this as nil and I believe it's this access token Exactly. So that's our client. In this go GitHub package, 
all the endpoints are kind of grouped by services. So there is a repository service, commits service, pull request service, and etc. So let's explore that. So it will be client dot, I believe it's repositories, and then there are multiple functions. So we'll be using this list by authenticated user. So it needs context and options. And yeah, let's look at the options that we can send. Mm, yeah, there are visibility type, sort. Maybe let's get where current user is the, the owner. So we'll set affiliation owner. So go into this affiliation owner. Then again, we need to create a context. We can use a similar one that we used here. Now, all these options were for the endpoints that I believe begin with list, they also have the pagination options. So you can do something like opt dot per page and it's maximum 100, I believe. So um, yeah, make sure when you kind of list very long results, you consider the pagination as well. So you either do it in a loop, kind of increasing the page or yeah, you specify manually which page you want. Um, we don't need it, I believe, for my case. But yeah, let's just say 50, right? And this endpoint returns us the list of repos, the response always, and, and an error. And that's actually what I like about this package because it always returns you the raw response from the GitHub as well as kind of unmarshaled data. Right, so you can just use the list of repositories if you don't care about, for example, what is the next page, what's the total amount of pages. So here I can just omit our response and focus on repositories only. And yeah, I mentioned here that, so I think it's go github dot repository, right? And an error, so that's our return values yeah we can simply return repos and error right and when we so we go back to our callback function that's why we retrieve the the access token so ideally you don't call any f uh, further apis here uh, just get the access token save it somewhere but for this exercise i don't have any other endpoints so I'll just simply do it here, all right? So repos error equal, oops, get current user repos and then token dot access token. Let's also very simply handle the error and able to get repos, maybe internal error. Otherwise, let's just simply print out the list of these repositories um, to the response writer, right? So you can do something like range repos. And um, so how do we do it? W.write. Um, so it's byte, let's say repo, get full name. So yeah, this go GitHub package also creates this, or has these methods to access some nullable fields. For example, full name, and maybe not full name, but other fields could be uh, nil, and you can use just kind of get and then field name to kind of for safer access. So yeah, let's get get and maybe new line, um, just comma space, and maybe. Yeah, right, header, HTTP, status, okay. Status, okay, cool. Okay, before executing this code, let's just quickly go through that, make sure that we don't leave any errors. Um, yeah, two endpoints, redirect, callback. Um, redirect just simply gets the URL, sends user to that, then GitHub will send 
the user back to the callback, we get the code. Uh, for this demo, we skip the state validation. Uh, we get the access token, and then we call this function get current user repos. All right, let's open our terminal. And yeah, do cron main.go. Yeah, I believe it's running because we don't have any log messages here. Cool, so now we can go to our browser or somewhere and click redirect. And that's our application that we just created. Um, I think public repository is included by default, so it's not listed here even, but I remember I put it as a scope. But yeah, let's just click authorize. As you can see, it sent us back to the callback URL that we specified both in GitHub uh, application that we created here. It sent us some code and state. So that was defined by us. Could be unique for each user for each session. We decided to, to keep it like that. And then, yeah, using the access token, uh, we were able to, to get the list of repositories. And that's in a nutshell a uh, Go application that lets users authenticate with their GitHub account and then calls GitHub API on their behalf. I personally like when websites have GitHub authentication as an option, it kind of makes it easier. I'll keep all the links in the description below so you can go and explore this GitHub API on your own. And please put any projects you have built that utilize GitHub API. I'll be happy to explore and have a look. Thank you. Till the next time. Bye.